Good afternoon and welcome to Hales Four Baptist Church online Wednesday night Bible study. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, I hope you enjoyed your snow day today, that you got to stay home and, and uh, just relax and enjoy the warmth of your own home. My kids got to stay home today from school and they just love sleeping in and enjoying that first snow day. Um, even though it didn't have much snow, just more ice, but uh, they, they really enjoyed that. Um, but thank you for joining us today. Uh, we have a few announcements to make uh, before we get started, and then we're going to open in a time of prayer. But um, uh, just to let you know that Sunday, um, we will have two services, at 8.30 and 11 o'clock service, and that is uh, going to be a special service. That is our Christmas service of the year, um, uh, the Sunday before Christmas, and uh, we're just excited about that. And um, Melvin's going to be in the house, and so he's going to be giving the message on Sunday. Um, and and it's also we're also going to be having communion on on Sunday, and so we're going to be doing that different. You'll pick up your um, individual cups and and uh, wafer as you as you walk in the service, and we've got uh, special things for that. Um, so we'll be doing it a little bit differently, but it's just going to be a, a sweet time of worship and and just uh, praising our Lord on Sunday. So if you can come out and make it, uh, that is. That would be great. I know you'll be blessed. Uh, and also child care and, uh, will, is, and also children's church is available at the 11 o'clock hour. And so, um, uh, so that for the parents with children, that is available uh, for you guys. And I know that's important. So a lot of things happening here. Um, and, and God has been so good uh, to us and so, and so good in the last few weeks. And we just, um, we just, we're just giving him the praise and the glory. Um, so, but before we get started today, we're going to open in prayer and and just kind of lift up our church and lift up you guys at home, and uh, and then get into the word here today. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for our time here today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this Christmas season, Lord, where we can just uh, reflect on the word becoming flesh, Lord, um, our Messiah becoming flesh, coming to, uh, to be God with us, and um, as we've been talking about over the last few weeks, and so I just thank you so much for that, Lord. Thank you for uh, the sacrifice he made on the cross for us, Lord, and um, we just give you the praise, because without him, we are, we are nothing. Uh, we are still lost, and uh, we still do not have our salvation and our forgiveness and the grace that you give us, uh, but God, we are so thankful that, that he uh, has offered that to us, um, and it's as simple as just trusting him and, and you are faithful to to forgive and, and to show us your grace. Um, Lord, I just pray your blessings upon um, all those in our in our church family that are hurting right now um, that are going through some, you know, just recovery things and just sicknesses. And um, we have a few deaths that have happened and we just pray comfort for for those families, uh, Lord, and um God, we just we just lift up anyone, any of those people that are hurting. God, just comfort them, be, walk with them, Lord, uh, this week, and let them know you love them. Uh, God, and, uh, uh, and those who need healing, just heal them, God. Those who need comfort, comfort them, um, Lord. Um, God, just uh, uh, pray for our church, Lord, and continue to be with us, Lord. And as we walk through uh, this just very strange year, um, and just hold us together and keep us, Lord, and protect us. Uh, God, bless our time here today. Um, and just speak through your word in Jesus name. Amen. Well, today we're going to be talking about Andrew, an active witness. So if you got your Bibles, turn to John chapter one and verses 35 through 42. And that's where we're going to be today. Um, and I know that may sound uh, a little like, well, we're talking about Christmas. Why are we talking about Andrew? And um, you'll see here in a few minutes where we're where we're headed with that. Um, but if you've ever been to a car lot, car lot to buy a car, uh, it is probably some of the most uncomfortable conversations that you will ever had. What does it take to get you into this car? What, what, how much would you pay for this car right here? Um, you know, these people have this high pressured sales. We don't even like to walk onto a car lot because a car lot, we, we just know that someone is going to come to us. They're going to talk about, about buying this car, about selling the car that you, you, you have presently and, and buying this new th thing. Sit down with us. Let's do a test drive. Let's write some paperwork up. Let's talk numbers. All of those things. Um, and, it's, and it's very uncomfortable um, as we talk to this salesperson. Um, no matter and no matter how good he or she is in small talk in trying to get you 
to to be comfortable it the the ultimate line the ultimate thing is that they want to close the deal for you to buy this car i can remember when a few years back me and summer we're we were a young married couple and we went to um tennessee and there was that we were walking in a store and there was one of these high pressured sales sales people there trying to to sell um you know, uh, timeshares. And so, and so we, they walk, we walk by us and like, well, all you have to do is go to this interview and, and they give you free tickets, um, at free tickets to Dollywood. And we're like, oh, okay, well, you know, I can, I can spare a few hours to get free tickets to Dollywood because Dollywood tickets are pretty expensive. And so we're like, okay. So we went to this, uh, thing one morning and we sat there for a few minutes. We, you know, uh, and, and they, they brought us in and um it was it was all it was almost funny because they 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 made us fill out this this uh form um and then we turned the form in or whatever and one of the questions was what is your annual salary um and so we we turned it in or whatever and um and and you know they looked at that and they just they walked us to the door they, <laughs> it was funny they just they didn't even talk to us they didn't even let us go back and talk to anyone but simply just took us to the door um and I was like, well, where's my free tickets? I wanted my free tickets. Uh, but we didn't make enough money to, to even qualify for the, for the whole interview. It was, it was just funny. But, and I was kind of okay with that because I didn't really want to talk to them anyways. About, I didn't want to get into this high-pressured sales situation. Um, but when you talk about the Bible and evangelism, a lot of times people think about sharing the gospel as this high-pressured sales situation where you've got to get a person from point A to point B. We've got to take a lost person and we've got to convince them that they need Jesus. And so we've got to have all the right answers. We've got to have all the right things to say. And it's this high-pressured situation. But in the Bible, Andrew clearly stood against all of this philosophy. Any, virtually every time that you hear his name in the gospel, he is introducing someone to Jesus. Uh, and that's kind of a neat, neat legacy to have. Andrew uh, knew that the true power of evangelism comes not from persuasive arguments, but simply just providing an introduction to Jesus. Uh, and that's because he knew that Jesus was per- per- perfectly capable of handling the rest. All you have to do is introduce someone to Jesus. You know, and it's Christmas time. You know, Christmas time is, we've, talked, we've said this phrase for the last two weeks, is a great time to share the story of Jesus. Now, we're going to be around family. We're going to be around friends. We're going to have work parties. We're going to be doing all kinds of things. And it is the perfect time to bring the name of Jesus up, to give someone the introduction to Jesus. Um, and Andrew was great at that. He was, he was awesome at, at sharing Jesus, at introducing people to Jesus. And so that's what we're going to be doing, encouraging you this season to share the story of Jesus, introduce someone to Jesus um, uh, in your life. In John chapter 1, 35 through 42, it says this. And the next day, John, John was there again with two of his disciples. Uh, when, when, he was, when, when he saw Jesus passing, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard, he, uh, heard him say this, he followed Jesus and turned turn. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, teacher, which means teacher. Um, he said, Where are you staying? He says, Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they, they spent the day, that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter, uh, Peter's brother, was, was one of the two who heard heard what John had said, who, who had followed Jesus, the first thing that Andrew did was find his brother Simeon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus, and Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simeon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is also translated Peter. You know, Andrew was one of, uh, of, of the two disciples uh, with, with um, John the Baptist, uh, and he, they followed John the Baptist. They had, they had uh, you know, been watching him and listening to him, uh, testifying about the coming Messiah, baptizing people. Um, and then they heard him say, this is the Messiah. This is the Lamb of God. 
That statement was enough for Andrew and his companion uh, to, to, to change course and to f start following this Jesus. Uh, his companion was probably John, uh, the, the John who wrote the gospel, not John the Baptist. Um, and though, although they had followed Jesus, uh, followed John uh, for, for a time now, they went with Jesus at this time, and they started following Jesus. And Jesus says, what, what do you want? And he says, Rabbi, where are you staying? And they spent the day with him that day, learning from him, hearing what he was teaching. They wanted to see what he was all about. And at the end of that conversation, after those several hours, Andrew emerges with this life-changing confession. He says, I have found the Messiah. I found the Messiah. Andrew knew that this was the Messiah. He had found the Messiah. And so let's not miss the gravity of this statement because for generations to generations, God's people have been waiting for the chosen one, the Messiah to come. The people had believed that the Messiah would probably come as a political leader or a religious leader, someone who would take them from the tyranny of Rome and, 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 and overthrow their government um, but at this point, Andrew, he, he didn't know, he had no idea what, what Jesus' intentions were, um, but he just knew that this was the Messiah. He knew that he didn't fully grasp what was getting ready to happen, but he knew that this was the truth. This was the Messiah. This is the, the one they had been waiting for. This, this Messiah would not, he, he, Jesus would not deliver them from Rome in a political way. Uh, he would do something far better. He was going to save them from sin. He was going to save them from death. Um, and, and, and so he, he would not just merely save them from Rome. How did someone introduce you to Jesus? And what was your response to Jesus? Uh, can you remember the day that you were introduced to Jesus? Can you remember the time when, when God uh, spoke to you and you, and you, you just said, i gotta, I got to know this guy? I got to know what Jesus is all about. I know for me, I was five years old, and my parents. I grew up in a um, predominantly, you know, we are we are strong. We had strong roots in in the gospel in my family, and so I am truly blessed to have two parents who love the Lord, and and we had two grandparents, two sets of grandparents who love the Lord, um, and I have aunts and uncles and and everything that that have invested into my life the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it was very very evident in our family that this is this is what we who we are um and so and of course we made the choice on our own to follow jesus um and i remember it was at the age of five that my dad asked me you know at the dinner table table right after church after sunday church we, we went home and and then he asked me do you want to receive jesus and we had already been to sunday school we have been to awanas we had all we've done all those things we knew what jesus was and who he was and what he did and so the answer was easy. It was yes, we do. Um, and so that was the time that, that, that I it was introduced to Jesus um, and, and, and met him for the very first time as my own personal Lord and Savior. Um, you know, but, what, but your story could be totally different. Your story could be the exact opposite of that. But can you remember the time that you were introduced to Jesus and the excitement? What was your response? Was it excitement where, where you just totally, you know, overwhelmed with the forgiveness and the grace and, and the peace that kind of just oh, just comes upon you you know um, what was your response to Jesus you know we talked Christmas is that great time again to share the gospel of Christ to introduce someone to Jesus um, you know you'll be around family members you'll be around um, you'll be around people that that we we're supposed to love you know and and it, and, and we're going to talk about that here in a minute uh, so, and we need to be obedient to share the gospel of Christ. You know, Andrew, um, w uh, did, what did he do um, when he found that this was the Messiah? He did one thing. He, he, you know, he, the first thing that he did when he found out that this was the Messiah, when he acknowledged for himself that this was the Messiah, was he says, I'm going to go get my brother Simeon. I'm going to go tell him, and I'm going to invite him so that he also can experience this Jesus. In fact, almost every time, again, that you see Andrew, 
he is introducing someone or inviting someone to meet Jesus. Notice that Andrew offered, uh, he didn't offer any clever pitch. He didn't have any persuasive argument. He just simply gave the invitation, Simeon, you need to come and you need to encounter Jesus for yourself. Um, There's this sweet freedom that Andrew had in his action. In order for us to feel that freedom of invitation, we need to know two things. Two things that we're going to talk about here. Um, and I want you to think of these things in context of Christmas and the people that you will be around. But uh, it's two things that, that, you know, we must sincerely love those who are closest to us. You know, um, Andrew, he loved his brother. He said, man, I met, I have found Jesus. I have found the Messiah. I've got to tell my brother. I've got to tell him so that he too can be introduced to Jesus. You know, without exception, the best thing that we can do, the best thing that we can offer our loved ones is Jesus. People, people might, you know, they might not know him. They might not even like the thought of it, but we need to be faithful to introduce them to Jesus. Um, if we truly love the people that we are closest to, then we are responsible to invite them to encounter the person, the one, the Jesus who, was gonna, who would change their life forever if they would trust in him. You know, um, Christmas is a great time for that. Christmas is a great time to introduce Jesus to those you love, to share the story, to open the Bible around the Christmas tree, and let's just read who Jesus was. Let's elaborate on what he did after that. Do you love your family enough to share Jesus with them? Do you love the people around you at those parties and Christmas parties you'll go to um, enough to share Jesus with them? Are we passionate enough about the lost to share Jesus with them? Because without Jesus, there's one destination, and it's, it's complete separation from, from the Lord. It's eternal death. And, and we wouldn't want anybody to go to, to experience that, to go to hell and, and to be separated from God. We wouldn't want that. If we truly love someone, we're going to share Jesus. And then we're going to let Jesus do the work. We're just going to make the, the invitation. We're going to, we're going to inter, the introduction. We're going to make the introduction. You know, you wouldn't, um, there's a, there, uh, in student ministry, I always gave the uh, example of if my kid ran out, the, out of the, the front of my house, uh, slammed the door and just kept running. And then I look up the street and I see a big Mack truck come running, that barreling down the road. What am I going to do? I'm going to run. I'm going to scream. I'm going to grab. I'm going to grab my child because I don't want him to run in front of that car. I don't want him to take a step into that road because I know what's coming down the road. You know, um, in the same way, we know what's coming in eternity, and so we need to be faithful to be providing opportunity or or we need to be faithful to be obedient to share and to give an introduction to jesus to those people around us second point is that we must believe that jesus is truly compelling you know uh, based upon the the encounter that we just read andrew was convinced that jesus was truly compelling um, on his own he didn't have to have a clever pitch he didn't have to know all the right words he didn't have to know every scripture in the bible all he needed to do was make uh, an opportunity for someone to meet Jesus. Um, and, I, and I like that. He had no, uh, no clever pitch or sales job, sales, sales uh, pitch to give anyone. He only needed to make an introduction. And when Peter, and Peter would make the decision on his own uh, once he got there. You know, it's amazing to watch people um, come to Jesus and see the life change. It's amazing to see God working in someone's life and to see them light up when they realize that they need Jesus. There's been time and time again where people come in to the church and are like, I got to talk to you, Pastor. I got to talk to you, Pastor. Why? Because I, I, need, I need Jesus. You know, I need, to get this, I need to get this nailed down. I need to make sure that I got this right because I need Jesus right now. And, and it's amazing. I was like, okay, well, all right, let's calm down. Let's, 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 let's sit here. And, I, and like, I really appreciate their excitement uh, cause in the intensity that they want to know Jesus. They want to, they want to know him, and they want to get it right right now. Um, that, that, is, that is amazing. We can't wait till tomorrow. We're going to do it today. And I'm like, well, let's do it. Let's go right now. And, 
Five minutes later, we have a brother and a sister in Christ. And, and a lot of times, they've already received Christ. They just need the, me to, or we, we just get to read some scripture with them to kind of to kind of give them some assurance that you're, you, you've, you've accepted Christ. And yes, you're right. You're good. Um, and so, you know, it's amazing to see. We don't have to be anxious to, that we don't have all the right answers or we don't have to be anxious for any of that. The Lord, when he calls someone, he's doing the work. We're just the instruments to maybe provide a, a, a trail back to the gospel. But um, he is doing the work. You don't have to have all the right words. You don't have to be the smartest person in the world. All you have to be is obedient to give an introduction like Andrew did. In John chapter 12, if we go a few pages over in verses 20 through 22, it says this. It says, now there were some Greeks among those who went up to the Jew to worship at the festival. They, they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. When they re, they re, with a request, Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. And so Philip went to tell Andrew, and Andrew and Philip turned and told Jesus. So during the Passover time, this was a, a time where Jews from all, over the, uh, uh, from all over would come and gather in Jerusalem for this time of worship uh, for the Passover. But there was also God-fearing Gentiles that would come and worship as well. And so, like many others, they wanted to see Jesus. And so they came um, and asked Philip, like, hey, can we see Jesus? Can you tell me where Jesus is? And, and so we aren't told why these people approached Philip and, and for, with this request. Um, but it's interesting what Philip's response was. He turned and told Andrew. He said, Andrew, these, these Greeks, they want to see, they wanna see, Je- they wanna see Jesus. Um, and so they, they made the introduction. But they knew that it's so it's interesting they would turn to Andrew. So they knew that Andrew was never shy, that he was he was um, he was the disciple that was always accustomed to introducing people to Jesus. And and so they were they knew that Andrew was not shy about introducing people to Jesus. And here was just another chance for him to do this. Um, And so like Andrew, we should we should always take every opportunity to connect people to Jesus especially when people are seeking answers about Jesus. Um, how many times have you gotten a conversation where someone's like, well, what does this mean in the Bible? Or what does this mean? And you may not know what it means, but you're like, well, let's, well, maybe we can make it, maybe we can study that a little bit together. Or maybe, I, look, give me some time. I'll go home and study it, and I'll come back and tell you what I find and, and have a conversation about it. Um, but make the most of every opportunity to talk about Jesus, to introduce people uh, to Jesus. Um, but, you know, you know, Andrew had no problem introducing people to Jesus, especially people who were genuinely seeking him. Um, and, and so, but a lot of us have a problem uh, that, that we are not in places where we have opportunities to introduce people to Jesus, or maybe, we, maybe the people that we are around are always believers, or always, um, they're always people that that know jesus you know um so 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 our so what's so that's a problem when we are supposed to be sharing the gospel um and so so sometimes we have to be intentional about it maybe we need to make put ourselves in places where we will have the opportunity to encounter people that are lost so that we can share the gospel with them uh you know because if we're not then, then how are we supposed to share the gospel? Um, and, and, and so that's, that's hard for some of us. For me, I'm a pastor. I do not, I, I'm in the church a lot. I'm around believers a lot. And so I have to make the most of opportunities when I'm around lost people. And so, uh, you know, so, so maybe I have to be intentional about that and, and go on mission trips and, and, make it, and be intentional when I'm out in public in the stores and the malls and and. and and when I'm talking to people in my, on my, in my neighborhood, you know, I have to make the most of those opportunities because I'm not around a lot of lost people all the time. Um, so I'm, I'm a prime example of what I'm talking about here. We must be intentional to fight against um, the trend uh, of just kind of staying to ourselves. You know, a lot of times in our community, people don't like to talk. People don't like to, to, to for, for uh, their lives to be interrupted with anybody, especially a stranger. 
So we have to be intentional to put ourselves in situations where we will encounter, pe encounter people that, that may not know Jesus so that we can have the opportunity to share Christ. Um, so what does that mean? What does that look like? Well, it might look like, hey, you just come outside and mow the grass and your neighbor is right there in his yard. But instead of tuning them out, instead of not talking to them, maybe it's a time to talk to them. Or you see someone walking by your street, maybe that's a time to talk to them and say, hi, how are you doing? Introduce yourself. Talk about who you are and, and, the, and the God that you love. Um, Maybe it's uh, when you go to the gym and, and instead of putting your headphones on and ignoring everyone, you take those headphones off and have a conversation with the person who's working out next to you um, so that you can share Jesus with them. Or maybe it's when you go to the grocery store, you smile and say hello to someone um, and you, and you get a, have an have a opportunity to share Jesus uh, or, or tell them about what's happening at your church and, and how, how you're excited about what the Lord is doing. Um, or maybe it's that it's talking to that person at those sporting events with your children and your grandkids, and, and you could talk to that person sitting there watching their grandkids or and their and their kids as well playing these sports and have a conversation that may turn into an introduction to Jesus. Um, these are simple choices that we can make uh, that are all driven by faith. We have to have the faith that, that God is working. Um, because he is constantly working in our lives, and he's also working in other lives every second of the day and every hour of the day and the night. He is, he is working throughout the world, and all we have to be is obedient. Um, it is our job to spread the gospel, um, but he, it's his job to change hearts. So we just have to be um, obedient to, to, to get out there and share the gospel um, and he's going to do the rest. He's going to do the rest. So here's two, three questions for you. Uh, what questions might non-believers have about Christ? Okay? And have, how will you respond to the opportunity to introduce someone to Christ? And then secondly, are you ready to be obedient? Because there are opportunities out there. And if you are obedient and you are looking and you are ready then God's going to provide an opportunity for you to share, to, for you to share Jesus. But you've got to be obedient, and you've got to be ready, and you've got to be looking, um, because they're, they're all around us. Opportunities to share Jesus, to introduce Jesus to someone, and I don't think there's a better time than right now, this Christmas season, to share Jesus. There are so many people that are hurting, that are depressed, that need hope, that need encouragement, and I know where they can find it. They can find it in Jesus. Um, I hope you know him today. Uh, all you have to do is, is uh, place your trust in him, acknowledge that he, he is Lord, that he died on the cross and rose again on the third day, acknowledge that you uh, are a sinner in need of his grace and his forgiveness, um, and then say, Lord, come into my life and be my Savior. It's as simple as that, and you can know him today as well, and you can know the peace and the rest that comes along with that. Um, and, and, then, uh, and then I want to encourage you to get involved in a, a Bible-believing church that uh, would, would help you grow in your relationship with Christ. Um, guys, um, I just want to encourage you to get out there, be obedient servants of Christ. Uh, say yes to that opportunity that God provides for us. Um, guys, uh, we, we just, I just love you um, so much. We're praying for you. Um, Merry Christmas. I hope you enjoy the next few weeks uh, in Christmas. I hope to see you Sunday. Um, for our, our sweet time of worship and, and communion and as we sing songs of praise for our Lord as well. Uh, we, so um, that that would be great. But if you're at home, uh, we will worship with you as well together um, through, uh, through our online ministry. Um, but we're going to close in prayer and then we're going to dismiss. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you so much for sending your Son uh, to us, Lord. Um, God, and I pray for, for um, all those who are listening here this evening, God, that you would just, that you would just um, give us a passion for the lost, give us a passion to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, Lord, and, and, and that you would provide opportunities uh, for us to do that uh, this week, Lord, that we could just simply share the story of Christmas with someone, um, and, and, and that you didn't just stay a child, but you, you died and rose again uh, for us as well, uh, so that we could have life. Um, and so I just pray that you would just provide opportunities um, to, for everyone here that's listening and for our church uh, to share the gospel, that people would see the difference in our, 
in our church and that people would say, man, they are on fire for the Lord. They're sharing Jesus everywhere they go. Um, something's happening at Hells Ford. Um, and so I just pray that for our, um, the, our the body of Christ, Lord, uh, here at Hells Ford. God, we just um, thank you again for the season of Christmas. Thank you for family. Thank you for friends. Thank you for our loved ones. And may we be obedient to share the gospel, to introduce them to your son. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, we'll see you next time, and Merry Christmas.